Hello, everybody. My name is Danny Brown, and welcome to Globalization and Culture One class. Uh, now, before this class, um, I sent you an email and I told you to get uh, some vocabulary, and I hope you have that vocabulary paper. Let, let me start my uh, PowerPoint here. Okay. Have you joined my class on Google Classroom? I hope so. The code is 62NUMNK, and please join Google Classroom for my class. Now, um, I am Danny Brown. I am a church pastor. I am a, a teacher, of course, a professional teacher with a PhD, Hakushigo, in foreign language education, but I am also a church pastor. Pastor in Japanese is Bokushi, Kyokai no Bokushi. And so I have a church, and you are welcome to come to my church. It's New Life International Church. Uh, this church is in Kofu City, Kofu in Yamanashi, Japan. Our church is in English and Japanese, Bairingaru this. And so you can come, you can sing in Japanese, sing in English. You can listen in Japanese, listen in English. And you're very welcome to come to my church. Okay, um, now, Right now, I think you should go to Google Classroom, stop this video, go to Google Classroom. There's another assignment. It's day one handouts, okay? All right, and get that assignment, day one handouts from Google Classroom, and you're gonna see the same vocabulary that I sent you yesterday, and you're gonna see another handout with uh, 50 states in America and the rules for getting driver's license in all those states. You need that paper for today's class and you're going to have a, a quiz and you need to use that paper for the quiz later. Okay, let's go back. Now, um, <clears throat> globalization class one, uh, it used to be American Society and Culture, and we decided to change that to globalization. And the vice president said to me, Danny, I like your American Society and Culture class, and American Society and Culture is globalized, and so I want you to keep teaching that. Uh, but also, um, I have added to that uh, one, avoiding stereotypes and prejudice as a part of globalization. Two, the influence of Christianity on Western culture because Christianity has globalized around the world. And three, American culture that has spread across the globe. Okay. Okay, now let me talk about grades real quickly. Grades is Seiseki. Um, for this class, you'll have quizzes. Most of the quizzes are vocabulary quizzes, but today you're going to have a quiz. And all the quizzes are 20% from your grade. Midterm test will be June 10th, 30%. Before the test, I will give you a paper and I will tell you what to study. But you must listen to my class you must take notes, memo tote kurasai. You got to take notes of everything I say in the class and, and remember it. And then for the test, you study your notes and you answer the questions on the test. Video summary, I will tell you about that later. I don't have the date for that yet, but you will have to watch a video in English and write a summary in English. That's 10%. Food cooking project. This is fun. You get to cook one American food and take a picture of your food and show me your picture. That's 10%. And the final test, July 29th, day 14, you take a final test. That's 30% of your grade. Altogether, 100%. Now, for my class, you need to come every day 
and uh, online, right now we're online. We might change to face to face. I haven't decided yet, but right now uh, you come online and you have to meet me on Google Meet and I call your name and you say here and I write down your name. Now, if you don't come, you're absent, keseki. And if you have five absences, you fail my class, okay? Keseki shitara watashi no jugyo no tan i kanarazu marawana yo ni narimasu kara. Okay, so please don't be absent to my class. Okay, listen carefully now. I'm going to teach now about American culture. Listen carefully, take notes. Uh, and next week, don't be late to my class, okay? Okay, get, get paper and get pen and listen to me speak and take notes in English. Okay, here we go. Paper that I gave you, the handout uh, called Day One Handout. There's a vocabulary paper there. Please look at that vocabulary paper. And I'm going to read these words now. Word one, daydream. Do you see that? Uh, daydream. Uh, that is hakujitsumu. It means it's like dreaming when you're asleep, but you're awake and you're just thinking about something. And it's like a story in your mind and you're not listening to anyone around you. You're just, ah, oh, that's daydreaming. Number two, uh, midterm test, chuki shiken. Uh, chuki means chu is mid, ki is term, chuki shiken is test. And you will have a midterm test. Final test, that's ki matsu shiken. That's the test at the end of this class after 12 weeks. By the way, this class is only 12 weeks. Usually we will have 14 weeks but uh, the 14 has been cut to 12 because of coronavirus. To take notes, and I wrote kurasude memo o toru. So you listen to me and you get yourself a piece of paper and you get a pen and you listen to Danny speak and you write notes. Okay, Danny said this and this and this. Now some people try to write notes in Japanese. It's okay if you write in Japanese, but it's very difficult to hear English and write Japanese. It's easier just to listen to the English and take notes in English. You need to take notes because we will have tests in this class. There are no books. The information is not on papers. You have to listen to me speak English. As I'm speaking, you have to take notes and use your own notes to study for the test. That's the only way to pass my task, my class. So this class is a listening practice class. Multiple choice. In Japanese, that's takuitsu mondai. That if you have A, B, C, D, choose A or B or C or D. Most of my tests are multiple choice, but there are a few uh, where you have to remember and write words, but mostly multiple choice. Attendance, shuseki, to attend, shuseki suru. You must attend my class. If you're absent four times, you cannot pass my class. Late, don't be late to my class. Even online, try to come to class on time. Grades is seiseki, seiseki, grades. Quiz is chisano shiken. Sometimes Japanese say quizu. Okay, we have a lot of quizzes in this class. Summary, yoyaku or matome. You have to write a summary. Average, heikin tekina. Average uh, population of Japan. Population is jinko, population. On campus, konai. Uh, campus is, in Japanese, is kyampasu. That is the, the college's land and buildings. And so konai or on campus means you're doing some activity inside the campus. 
Some people live on campus. That means their apartment or dormitory uh, is on campus. Um, okay, dormitory is dyo, daigaku no dyo. Off campus is not on the college campus. You're outside of the college building and land. To move is hikosu. Uh, Americans move many times. And we will talk about how that influences our culture. Register, toroku. To register your name is to write your name, your address, and officially uh, put your information. People at the city hall, here's city hall, shiakusho. People go to the city hall and they register their name at the city hall. Certificate of residence. Certificate means show my show. Residence means jumin. Uh, and so a certificate of residence is jumin hyo. Jumin hyo. Job is shigoto. Driver's license is unten menkyo. Learner's permit is unten menkyo ukeru mai ni lenshi no tame michi ni unten kyokasho. So that means that before you um, before you get your driver's license, you get a paper that says you can practice driving. I'll explain more later. Okay, I'm gonna stop for just a minute because my computer's making some noise, just a minute. Okay, we've started again and let me put uh, globalization back on there, just a minute. All right. Okay, so um, continuing with our vocabulary, we have uh, difference, differences chigai. There are differences between, we usually say between, difference between, differences between uh, America and Japan. State is steto or shu. America has many states. Law is horitsu. Law, state law is shuho, shuho, and national law is kokuho, kokuho is national law. Taxes, taxes are ze or zekin. To spit on the street. Hmm, tori ni tsubohaku. Basically, spit is okay, that's to spit. Sorry, that's not very nice. Uh, so don't spit on the street. Alcohol, arukoru, that's alcohol. Against the law, iho is against the law. Speed is sokudo. Speed limit is seigen sokudo. S speed limit, seigen sokudo. Highway is kosokudoro. Kosokudoro, highway. Per hour is jisoku, jisoku. MPH, M is miles, P is per, H is hour, miles per hour. That's jisoku, that's the speed. Kilometers per hour is KPH. So if I drive 50 miles per hour, that equals 80 kilometers per hour, or I can say, if I drive 50 mph, that equals 80 kph. Okay, so you need to be good at listening to English to listen to this class and to take notes. You need to get a paper right now. Do you have paper? What are you gonna do when you come to the test? Uh, you can't listen to all my videos again, it's too much. Get a paper, listen, take notes of the important points on the paper. Not everything is written on the PowerPoint. I write some things on PowerPoint, but not everything. So you need to listen to what I say and write the important points. Uh, listen, don't fall asleep in class. You'll be in trouble when your test comes. Don't look in the air and daydream. Oh, no, no, while Danny's
talking on and on and your mind is daydreaming. Okay, you need to listen and focus because listening to English is difficult work. Please get some paper and pen, listen to me and take notes now. Later today, you will have a quiz over today's lecture. Kyo wa kami o tote, otashi no hanashi o kite, memo tote kudasai. Kyo wa ato de, ano kyo no kogi ni tsuite, quiz ga arimasu kara. All right, now Americans are very uh, independent people. Independent means, uh, dependent means we need someone. Independent means we don't need someone. Uh, so independent means I can do everything myself. And Americans move. We move our home many times. And so uh, many people like to stay near their family, near their friends, and they always help each other and they understand everything in the city. But if you move, you have to learn how to take care of yourself. You become more independent. The average American moves 11.4 times in his life. 11.4 times. That's more than people in most countries. Um, now, each year, 17% of the population moves. That is almost one out of six people every year. If you have five friends, you or one of your five friends will move this year. That's what it means. So uh, this actually causes Americans to learn to accept change very quickly because we move and we change. We move to another home, we change. We move to another home, we change. Uh, college students, what about college students? College students, about 30% of freshman college, that's beginning first year college students, 30% live on campus in America. 27% live off campus. Uh, that is, they don't live in the dormitory of the college, all right? 30% live on campus in a dormitory. 27% live off campus in a, a apartment. Now, 43% live with their parents or their relative, that is an uncle, aunt, a grandparent. And so 43% uh, like to live with their family. It's cheaper that way. But many people want to move far away from mom and dad so they can be free to do what they want. Most two-year colleges do not have a uh, dormitory or apartment on campus, but most four-year colleges have an on-campus dormitory and the students move on campus, they live there, or they move to an apartment very near the campus and they live there and they uh, go to college. And so we start our college career by moving. Now uh, here is Americans moving by age. You can see that 85 years and over, they don't move so much, 6.1%. 75 to 84 year old people, 5% of them move, not so many. But look down at 20 to 24 years, wow. Uh, this age, 20 to 24 years, they're graduating college or they're just getting new jobs and changing jobs. It's very usual for young people to get a job. They don't like their job, so they get a new job and they are trying this, they're trying that. And so they move a lot, but 35%, that's one third of all uh, 20 to 24 year olds. Now, if we start at age one to four, these are children age one to four, 22 0.6% of American children move every year. That's a lot. In one year, nearly a fourth of all children age one to four are going to move because the parents don't really care about uh, children age one to four. Uh, they love their children, but they don't care if they move because the children can make new friends. They don't usually go to school. And so the parents change job and they move. Age five to nine, they move less because children are in school, but they still move. It's uh, age five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19. There's still a lot of moving. Um, it's not such a bad thing. The children don't like it, but the American families 
need to move because they change jobs so much. That's a key. They change jobs, so they have to move. Now, in Japan, families don't like to move. If a Japanese father changes jobs, the father might live far away from the family. American families hate dividing the family. So if the father's job changes, the whole family moves. They will not say, oh, the children can't move because of their friends. We say, no, families first before friends. And so the family moves and the family stays together. Now, age 20 to 24 and age 25 to 29, these are young times where uh, people get out of college or they just get out of high school and start working and they're trying to find themselves. What is my job? What is my career? And they change many times. And so they move many times. And it's not considered bad in America to change jobs. So you're not a bad person if you change jobs. America has many states. Shu is state. People who move often, they, they move to another state, and this causes big changes because every state in America is very different. How many states are in America? Do you know? You should know. It's the number of stars on the flag. If you count the stars on an American flag, how many are there? Can you answer? There are 50. 50 states in America. Um, and these 50 states, uh, I've lived in several of them. Uh, Texas is Danny's home state, but actually Kentucky is my home state. I moved to Texas, to Kentucky, back to Texas, back to Kentucky. Okay, so I've lived in both of these. I like Texas a little better. It's more fun, but Kentucky's wonderful too. You ever heard of Kentucky Fried Chicken? That's from my state, Kentucky. So there's 50 states. Um, each state is separate, like 50 countries. Every state has its own laws and rules. By the way, who is this man? Do you know his picture? Who is he? We call him Uncle Sam, a symbol of the American government. When you see him, you're thinking American government. So for example, someone might say, Uncle Sam has raised taxes again. It means the government has raised taxes again. Okay, now Americans focus on state laws. Japan focuses on national laws. Uh, most laws in Japan are for the whole country. But America has very few laws for the whole country. Most of our laws are for the state. For example, in education, Japan has the Monbusho, and they make all the laws and uh, everybody follows them. Now there are many city and prefectural rules that also control education in Japan. But most important rules in Japan come from the national government. The, uh, in America, the US, most rules for education are state rules. That means that you have 50 states and every state has a completely different education system. And so when you move to a new state, wow, you get a different kind of education. Driver's license. In Japan, uh, the age of the license and the rules for passing tests, they're national. The local, uh, police may have some different ideas from city to city in Japan, but mostly the rule is is made by the national government. In the U.S., every state has a different license. And so if you get your license in Texas, it's different than a license in Kentucky. Drinking and alcohol. Japan has one set of laws. Everybody in Japan follows the same laws. In America, every state is different. They have different uh, rules according to the state. Stealing, uh, Japan's laws for stealing are national. The US does not have national laws for stealing. The stealing laws in the US are state laws. Marriage and divorce, there's one rule for marriage in Japan. It's the national rule. America. You can marry at different ages, uh, depending on different situations. In some states, you have to have your parents' permission if you're 18. In some states, you can marry at age 18 without your parents' permission. 
and every state is different. Okay, uh, laws for buying and drinking alcohol. <clears throat> U.S. national law says that children under age 21 can buy alcohol. That law is for buying only. There is no national law for drinking alcohol. Drinking laws are state laws, okay? In some states, children can drink alcohol in many states if the parents say okay. For example, look here. You see the pink states? The pink states say that no child under 21 can drink. So these Idaho, Kansas, Indiana, Alabama, North Carolina, West Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is not a state, but we count it as a separate area. These states, children cannot drink, never. That's the state law. Now, the yellow states here, okay to drink at home. If you go home and your parents say okay, in the yellow states, children can drink alcohol, and many parents give their children wine or beer. But many parents say, no, 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 you are too young and they'll make their children wait to age 16 or 18 um, to drink. Now the green states is okay to drink alcohol anytime. The children cannot buy alcohol, but a child 10 years old can get his father's beer and walk down the street and drink alcohol, okay? Now on the restaurants, usually the restaurants don't serve alcohol to children. But uh, other than the restaurants, there's no rules and the children can drink alcohol. Now you might think, wow, those Americans drink so much alcohol. It is not true. Actually, Americans don't drink alcohol uh, so much. We just have a lot of freedom. If you want to drink alcohol, you can. Look at this. What percent of Americans actually drink alcohol? Okay, what do you think? In the Movies, they drink a lot, but in real life, only 35% of American adults drink alcohol often. Only 35%. 35% of American adults drink one glass of alcohol a week. Okay, so 35% drink a lot, like every day. 35% drink maybe one a week. And 30% of Americans never drink alcohol. Does Danny drink alcohol? No, in my life I have never drunk alcohol. So uh, you think of Americans in the movies like, hey, yeah, let's drink, let's drink. It's crazy. It's because the movie producers drink a lot. But real Americans just don't drink that much. Uh, and if you take the 35% who drink one glass a week and the 35 who never drink, that's 65% of Americans drink very little alcohol. But the 35% of Americans who drink, they drink a lot. In fact, 10% of Americans have a drinking problem. They drink too many drinks. 10% of Americans drink and they drink 10.6 drinks each day. That means they're alcoholic. So we have a lot of alcoholics in America. But uh, 65% of Americans don't drink very much at all. Okay, uh, driving. Uh, the driving is very different um, depending on the state. 26 states require students who are under age 18 to go to driver's school, okay? 26 states, if you're age 19 or older, you do not need to go to school, okay? So if you're 19, you can study the book on your own. You don't go to school. Just study the book, walk into the police and say, I'm ready for a test. They say, here's the test. You take it and you're finished with the writing part. Now there's a driving part, but you don't have to take any school in 26 states. Um, 18 states require school only if you are age 15 or 16. So if you are age 17 or above, no school in 18 states. And six states, there's no school. You never need to take school. You can, 
but you don't need driving school. You just study on your own. Um, all right, and there are different laws. 26 states require students under age 18 to go to driving school. The other states have different laws. That's a summary. Many Americans teach their children how to drive. I taught my sons how to drive. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how we do this in a minute, how we can legally teach our children how to drive. There's another child that looks like a Hispanic family, Mexican or uh, South American, who now live in America. Uh, this is a black family, father and son. He's teaching his child how to drive. Notice Americans drive on the right side of the car, okay? All right, now do you have a paper? You need to stop right now and get the first day handout. Go to Google Drive if you don't have it. Google Drive, download the first uh, day one handout, okay? The day one handout and download that and look at that file on page two. It's called handout two, handout two. Can you see that? Handout two, driver's permit and license ages in 50 US states. Please get this paper. Okay, if you look at this paper, first let me describe the US driving system. Um, first thing that happens is that, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off of this for just a minute, okay? First thing that happens is that uh, you study for the test. Some Americans go to school, but many do not. You just study this book from the police and you walk in and you just take a written test. And it's very easy usually. And if you pass that test showing that you know the laws, you get a piece of paper. This piece of paper is called a driver's permit or learner's permit. Do you see here learner's permit on the paper? Learner's permit, uh, permission to practice driving if an adult is in the car with you. So uh, your child gets this piece of paper that has the child's name, says they can drive, and they sit in the car and you sit beside them and you watch the child drive and the child just practices and you tell the child, okay, uh, turn the key, uh, put the car in drive, put your foot on the brake. Oh, oh, you were putting your brake on too strongly and you just teach the child how to drive. Uh, and so after they get the learner's permit, they practice driving with the adult, but they must have an adult in the car with them and the adult must have a license. Next, they get a restricted license. After the learner's permit, they go into the police station and they say, I'm ready for a test. And they get in a car with the police. And in Japan, there's one place that you drive and you memorize the course. Uh, in Kofu, there's course A, course B, or course C, and you have to memorize where to drive. But in America, you just get in your car, the police gets in your car, and he says, go straight, turn left here, turn right here, now turn around, now park, and he sees how well you can drive. And if you, if you drive and you pass that driver's test, you get a restricted license. The restricted license says you can drive, but only with certain rules. Usually, you can drive in the daytime, but not at nighttime with a restricted license. You have to drive while the sun is up. Sun goes down, it's dark, no driving. Many states uh, for restricted license, you cannot drive with friends because young people tend to get into an accident if their friends are with them. They're like joking, ha 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 and they get into an accident. So with a restricted license, usually not with your friends. Now, after you've driven successfully with a restricted license, uh, sometimes a year or two, then uh, you can get your full license. Some places require a test, but many will just hand you the full license because you were successful after a year. And with a full license, you can drive anywhere, anytime. And you can drive alone by yourself.
Now look at these ages here. Look at these ages. Um, here we have Alabama. Alabama, you can get a learner's permit at age 15 years, all right? That means that you take a test and you get this paper and you and your parents can drive on the street at age 15, you can drive. Then you can get a restricted license in Alabama at 16. And at age 17, you can get a full license in Alabama. I was 16 years old when I got my full license, um, but the law changed after that. Alaska, you can get your learner's permit at 15 and a half years, restricted license, 16 years, full license, 16 years and six months, okay? Now, some places require you to be very old. Let's look at Connecticut. Connecticut, you have to be 16 years old to get a learner's permit. You get a restricted, restricted license at 16 years and four months, but you can't have a full license until you're 18 years old. Um, many of these states are very different. Look down at Kansas, Kansas State. How old can you get a learner's permit? Can you see? At 14 years old, you can get a learner's permit in Kansas. That's pretty young. So you can start driving on the street with your parents at age 14. Age 15 in Kansas, you get a restricted license. Age 16 and six months, you can get your license, full license in Kansas. Like I said, I was driving with a full license at age 16. Now, why do some of these places give you uh, a license early and some of them make you wait a long time? For example, in Texas. In Texas, you cannot have your license, full license, until you're 18. Why? Let's look at a picture here. I'm going to put the PowerPoint back. Okay. Now, this is Idaho. Uh, in Idaho, you can get your license when you are 16 years old. But look at the streets. There's not many people living in Idaho. So it's not so dangerous to get a license, okay? Um, this is South Dakota. In South Dakota, you can get a license at age 16. But again, there's not many cars. Now look at New York, age 17. Uh, you have to be older, okay? Uh, but some places in New York are not very crowded, and then some are crowded. So you can get your license when you're 17. Now here's Maryland. Maryland's very crowded, very, very crowded. You have to be 18 before you can get your license. And so it depends on the place that you're at to get your license. Here's Eli, Nevada. Not many people live in Eli, Nevada, and yet you can get your license at age 18. Why? Because another place of Nevada, a famous city, what's the famous city in Nevada? It's called Las Vegas, Nevada. Is very, very crowded. And so they want you to get your license at age 18 so you won't drive in Las Vegas too young. And so it depends on the city and depends on the state, but every state has their ages. And because Americans move so much, we move from state to state, um, it changes our life. And so if a child, for example, is in uh, South Dakota, they get a full license at age 16. What happens if that family moves to Massachusetts? In Massachusetts, you can't have a license at age 16. You have to wait until age 18. Well, if a child moves from um, South Dakota to Massachusetts, they have to lose their license. And they're very angry. Oh, Dad, why did you move? to Massachusetts, I had a license, I could drive, I was free, and now I have to give up my license, that I'm so upset. And so the family has to think when they move from one state to another, there are many changes in rules. And so the family has to be careful and be sure that they really want to move. And this teaches the family to change quickly. 
Now look at this, these uh, speeds, speed limits. There are 50 states and we have speed limits in every state. Now um, this is the speed. Notice that in Japan, the speed is 80 kilometers per hour. Now there actually are some highways with 100, 100 in Japan, but not very many. Most highways in Japan are 80. And um, that is 50 MPH, 50 miles per hour equals 80 kilometers per hour. But uh, in America, we have much faster speeds. Let's look back now. There we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, excuse me. Look at this 60. 60 miles, MPH is miles per hour. 60 miles per hour equals 97 kilometers per hour. Now, I want you to memorize this. I wrote 100 kilometers because it's very close. If you will memorize 60 equals 100. 60 miles per hour equals 100 kilometers per hour. That's a good way to memorize the speeds. And so if the speed is 80 kilometers per hour, multiply that times uh, 0.6 and you'll get 50 miles per hour, all right? Um, 105 kilometers per hour times 0.6 and you'll get around 65 kilometers per hour. Now on your midterm test, I will test you and I will say, 60 miles per hour is how many kilometers per hour? Wait, is that the test or the quiz? I don't remember. 60 miles per hour is how many kilometers per hour? And if you write 97, that's okay. If you write 100, that's okay, because that's close enough. Okay, now notice that the blue states here have a speed limit of 55 miles per hour. That's 89 kilometers per hour, these states. You have to drive pretty slow. The green states, which is only Hawaii, you can drive 60 miles per hour. That's the fastest you can drive on a highway. That's 97 kilometers per hour. The yellow states can drive 65 miles per hour, which is 105 kilometers. These states here can drive 100 kilometers, 105 kilometers per hour on the highway. The orange is 70 miles per hour, and that equals 113 kilometers per hour. Look at all of these states where you can drive uh, 70 miles per hour. Now the fastest states are here in the west, 75 miles per hour, that's 120 kilometers per hour. Why are these states so fast? It's because there's not uh, many cars in these states, and so people can drive really fast because they just don't see many cars and it's pretty safe. But what happens is that if you're in Texas, the speed limit is 65. And then you would want to drive to uh, Washington. So you drive from Texas, you're driving 65, 65. And then you can go really fast. Suddenly you cross the state line to New Mexico. You're driving really fast and then suddenly you hit Idaho you better slow down because the police are waiting at that state line they want to see when you cross the line if you're going to slow down and follow their state law so you got to slow down now we're going through Oregon we're going to go really slow through Oregon 55 miles per hour then finally we get to Washington we can speed up to 60 miles per hour. So when you're driving in America, you have to change speed anytime that the state changes the speed. You have to watch out or you'll get a ticket from the police. Um, now in Japan, the speed is usually 80, sometimes 100 kilometers per hour. But you know that on the Chuo Do, uh, people don't drive 80, they drive 100. And some of them drive 120 on the Chuodo. So you can imagine that when you get to these states that drive, have 75 miles per hour as the speed limit, people don't really drive 120. They're driving 140, 150 kilometers per hour. 
Um, so that's pretty fast driving. All right. Um, so when people change states, they have to change their rules about drinking alcohol. They have to change the rules about speed, what speed to drive. They have to change their rules about getting married, about um, many things. Uh, the laws change about education. And so Americans are constantly moving and we're changing our rules, changing our rules. And we don't like changing, nobody likes changing, but Americans are used to changes and we become independent. We're away from our families. We move from mom and dad. We move away from our hometown. We become independent and we have lots of changes. And so this is one of the reasons, there are many reasons that Americans are good at changing and good at being independent. Okay, today my lecture is finished, but now you have a quiz. Please download your quiz from Google Classroom and finish the quiz. Turn it in using Google Classroom before 4.50. Ano, kono quiz wa Google Classroom de yonju goju fun made ni das na kereba nara nai. You must write answers to the quiz using your computer. This is a PDF file, but you can click, click the underlined place and you can write there after you click it. You must turn in your quiz soon, today, by Google Classroom before 4.50. Do not talk to your friends about the answers to this quiz. Talking to friends is cheating, so do this quiz by yourself. Okay, I will explain briefly in Japanese. あの、次はクイズしなければならない。このクイズの答えを Google Classroom de dashte kudasai. Kotai ni tsuite, tomodachi ni sodan shinai de kudasai. Ano, soreba fusekoi inadimas. Hi, okay, thank you very much, everybody. Take your quiz now, and I'll be looking for your answers at 4.50. Bye bye now.